Well, Mr. Ace finally got the portrait of himself into the house, even though the surprise he had planned it would be for Jane didn't work out the way he intended it would. But Jane's worries as to where Mr. Ace has been going nights are over. The scene now is the living room after dinner. Jane peers out of the window into the night as Mr. Ace and Marge sit by. Listen. What? Hush, dear, listen. Listen to what, Jane? Don't you hear that music? Somebody's got a loud radio. There's not a radio. Sounds like Beethoven. No, it's not a Beethoven. <laughs> oh, it might be a Beethoven. It is not. Uh, what's a Beethoven? <laughs> Where's it coming from? That's just what I was thinking. Oh, you know what? What? Somebody new moved next door again. What? I thought somebody was moving in there, but I've been so busy with poking, going down to the jail every day, I didn't know. Oh, so you didn't have time to check up on your neighbor. Now, listen, Jane, you know what our last next door neighbor's got us into? Hush, dear, listen. Beautiful piano. Somebody did move in. Look, there's a light. I wish you'd see the light and stop taking up with strangers. I do see the light. Come here, look. Get away from that window, will you? There's only one light in the whole house, right by the window. I can't see who's playing it, though. Well, whoever did plays a beautiful piano. I can't see if it's beautiful or not. Jane, please. Yes, dear, listen to it. I'm willing to listen to it. It sounds marvelous at this distance. Now, let's just keep it at this distance. I thought there was something going on there all day, and I kind of looked over there once or twice, but I didn't see anybody. Looks like somebody sneaked in without letting you know about it, Jane. Well, I guess I'll have to get my cup and go on over. Oh, no. A cup? She's not going over there to borrow sugar. Oh, dear, you have to do it when a new neighbor moves Stop in. Stop doing that to talk to her, will you, Mar? Stop that laughing and tell her that she can't do it. Isn't he awful, Mar? You don't understand things like this, dear. Suppose we moved into a new neighborhood. Wouldn't you feel bad if nobody came over and wanted to borrow a cup of sugar from us? No. See, it's the same way with... No. I said no. I wouldn't feel bad. I'd want to be left alone. I'd want to find out who my neighbors were at first. At least I'd like to have a couple of days alone. These people just moved in, whoever they are. See, even you're curious about them. You said whoever they are, you want to know. Well, the only way to find out is to borrow some sugar, and I'm going oh, over. wait a minute, Jay. Well, it's about time you told her. The first day those Greeleys moved in there, she was over there, and the trouble that got us into. I think he's right, Jane. Let's give him a couple of days anyway. Let's just sit here and listen to that music. Oh, it stopped. See, I'm going over and borrow a cup of sugar. I'm not going to let you. That's final. Oh, dear, you're spoiling Why the don't thing. you wait till they want to get acquainted? Yes, why not let them come over and borrow the sugar? That's not the way, Marge. The one that moves in doesn't borrow. It's the one that's already there that Oh, can. I suppose that's the rules of the game. Gosh, there it is again. Well, that's pretty, coming in the middle of that music. Oh, well, just a minute. Expecting someone over? Not that I know of, but you know this house. You know how impossible it is to spend a quiet evening at home. Well, it might get her mind off of next door. I hope so. Hello, Jane. Why, Neil. Neil. Well, this is a surprise. Weren't you expecting him, Morris? How's you been, Jane? Why, fine. Why, I haven't seen you in a doomsday. Well, come in. Well, you're looking splendidly. Well, thanks. Marge, it's Neil. That's yes, so I hear. Well, what brings you out here tonight? Hello, Neil. Well, Miss Grace, how is it? Pretty good. You remember me, don't you? Uh-uh, a little sarcasm there. Why, haven't you two been seeing much of each other? Well, the last time I saw this gentleman was exactly three days ago, and I thought it was understood. You that... thought I wouldn't see you again until Sunday, right? Well, you were going to be so busy. And I am busy. Certainly look it. Well, take off your coat, Neil. Sit down. Nope, I can't stay long. We were just listening to a concert from next door. Next door? Yeah, yeah. some new people moved in today, and we didn't even know about it until we heard the piano. I was just going over to borrow a cup of sugar when you came in. <laughs> borrow a cup of sugar? Uh-huh. Get acquainted to me? Yeah, that's her idea of getting acquainted. It's a ritual <laughs> Jane goes through whenever new neighbors move in. What do you mean you can't stay long? Where are you headed for? I'm on duty for my paper out on the story. Around here? Yep. What kind of a story? Well, uh, this sort of hand Jane a kick. A uh, what? It's about your new neighbor. Next door? Next door. What have they done? Is it murder or... Murder? <laughs> they been carry other news besides murder. You don't think there's a murder in the heart of a pianist that plays like that, do you? Beautiful, isn't it? But who are they? A famous pianist? No, no, or... not a pianist, but he's famous. I guess the piano gets him into his mood. Neil Williams, if you don't tell us this instant who it is, I... <laughs> Get over Jane wanting to go next door and borrow a cup of sugar. That would have been good. See, dear, even Neil... Who 
Where's that, that Neil? Neil? Well, you ever hear of Arthur Lorenz? Arthur Lorenz? What? Don't tell me you never heard of him. Wait oh, a minute. Uh, Isn't he a movie something or other? A movie actor? No, no, not an actor, Jane. A, a movie director. A movie director? Catch her before she swoons, will you, Mars? Is that who's living next door here? That's the guy. Well, why here? He's pretty far from Hollywood, isn't he? He's here studying the typical American suburban town. He's going to make a movie about it. And our paper's tying up with him in a publicity stunt to shoot some of the pictures here and hold a contest to get some girl to play a principal part. Going to pick a girl to act in yep. the movie? Yeah, and I'm on my way over now to interview him and lay out the plan for the contest. Oh, you're in charge of the whole stunt, I suppose. Well, my paper looked around for the best man they could find, and there I was. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You mean he's going to take a girl that lives in this town and she's going to act in the movie? That's about the size of it, Dan. And you're going to be busy hunting this beautiful girl to play in it? Well, Marge, I'd look into that. <laughs> <laughs> Marge understands. That's what I meant when I told you I'd be busy, Marge. The paper's leaving the whole thing to me. Uh, there's going to be a lot of girls entering this thing, and it's up to me to sort of weed out the bad ones. Oh, it's up to you. Well, Mr. DeMille himself, I suppose <laughs> Mr. Lorenz won't have anything to say about it. Well, he's going to leave it mostly to me. He's more interested in shooting the picture and studying the town. He'll leave it to my judgment to pick the right girl. Well, Neil, uh, how have you been? What? Oh, fine, fine. Well, I've certainly missed you, Neil. I was only saying tonight, I wonder where Neil is. I didn't hear you. I said it to myself. Oh. Well, it certainly is nice seeing you. Well, thanks, Jane. Yes, sir. Of all the fellows that Marge ever knew, I always said you were the best one. <laughs> they got you. <laughs> thanks, Jane. You're kind of bad. I've always said it. It sure is nice to see you. You haven't been over for dinner for the longest time. Well, thanks. I'll try to make it very soon. All right. Um, about this contest, Neil. Oh, I... <laughs> oh, that was it. You had me fooled for a minute, Jane. If that's a sample of your acting, you ought to be able to please Mr. Lorenz. Well, i got to be going. The sound of that music is getting very impatient. Maybe I'll stop back when I'm through. Maybe you'll stop back. If you don't bring him over here and introduce him to us, your name's Maud around here. Now, Jane, don't oh, start. I don't think Mr. Lorenz will want to meet us. Hey, that's an idea. It might be just the thing. He's studying the types around town. Sure, I'll ask him to stop oh, over. but Neil, we don't want to be put on exhibition. No, it's nothing like that. He's really a regular guy. I met him this morning. None of that Hollywood foolishness about him. He knows his business. I'll bring him over. I wonder what I'll wear. What you'll wear? Oh, mm-hmm. Jane, don't go getting dolled up. No, just be natural. He wants tight, natural tight, just as you are, Jane. Oh, but my hair is such a sight. Well, it's all right, even if it is. Oh, it's not as bad as that. <laughs> <laughs> you just stay the way you are. I'll drag him over here. You're going to like him. He's a nice, quiet, foreign type. Foreign? Yeah, he's Viennese. Well-looking oh. guy. Six-footer, ladies. Well, you wait for me, and I'm pretty sure I can arrange it. I'll see you pretty soon. Oh, Neil, I don't think you ought to start You're going to like them. I'm so long. A movie director. All right, now, take it easy. It has nothing to do with you. Nothing to do with me? Did you hear what Neil said? Some girl in this town's going to be in the picture. Oh, I suppose you think you're going to get into this contest, much less win it. Well, isn't Neil in charge of it? But Jane, he couldn't fix it. His paper wouldn't stand for it. Whether he could or not, what's it got to do with Jane? She's not a movie actress. How do you know what I am? It's just like my sister when she got married. Her husband kept saying she couldn't do anything. And I suppose she could. She had a beautiful voice. She sang like a nightingale. Everybody told like her so. <laughs> Everybody but her husband. I see. And you think I'm keeping you from a movie career. Well, I don't think you've got a career. Well, that's just you that thinks that. Then I hate to take sides again, but I don't think you're cut out for the movies. Oh, you too, my best friend. Mm, yeah, now it looks like you're alone in your ideas of your career. I don't care. I want to be alone. Mm, you're beginning to sound like a movie actress. I want to be alone. <laughs> well, I always said that my sister hadn't gotten married. Well, maybe you think I'm holding you back. I was saying about my sister. And you meant to compare it to us. Oh, if the shoe pinches, wear it. If the shoe pinches. <laughs> How often does a girl get a chance like this? Imagine a movie director right next door to us. You want me to sit here just piling my thumb. Well, there's something in that. Opportunity only knocks one. Yes, only knocks one. Yeah, that's nothing compared to the number of times a critic will knock. It's the same way with that Martha Redding that lived down the block from us. Look what she did. I don't know Martha Redding. Look how good she did. She's no smarter than I am. Yeah, just about. And she got a chance to go to Hollywood when she won a contest, and she went out there, and it wasn't three months before she married a cameraman. And then she got divorced, and now she owns a beauty parlor in Seattle. Well, if she can do it, I guess I can. <laughs> oh, she's 
got him. There they are. Well, why did he have to drag that man over? Oh, well, you let him in, Marge. Not me. Well, I want to be sort of sitting here like this. <laughs> you go ahead, dear. Oh, I don't like this. I don't know why we can't be right Oh, hurry, here. dear. Uh, give me that book, Marge. This is no time to read. I'm just going to act like I'm reading. Is this all right? Oh, perfect. Well, how are you, Mr. Ace? You remember me. Oh, hello, Neil. Come in, Mr. Laurent. Mr. Ace, this is Arthur Laurent. You've heard of him, of course. Sure, sure. Come in. I hope I don't be rude, Mr. Ace. Not at all. This is a surprise, having a celebrity like you so close. Please, I prefer to not be Mr. Levin. Oh. Mr. Laurent is a regular guy. Come in. Oh, uh, this is Miss Hale, Mr. Laurent. Oh, delighted, Miss Hale. Good evening, Mr. Laurent. And this is Mrs. Ace. Mr. Laurent, Jane. Oh, well, oh, well, I was just reading this book. Oh, Neil, hello. This is Mr. Laurent, the movie director. The movie director? Oh, well, I'm pleased to meet your acquaintance. Thank you. Oh, well, won't you sit down? Yes, do. We're sorry, Neil, dragged you away from your piano. We were just listening to you. Oh, I hope I did not disturb. No, not at all. Mr. Laurent is in town to make a movie about suburban life. Gonna have a lot of publicity and hire a girl for the picture, too. It's gonna be colossal. <laughs> Mr. Williams is so, how shall I say it, dynamic. Yes, isn't it? Personally, I could never get used to your hustle and bustle. Oh, uh, Mr. Lorenz, yes. uh, when is the contest going to be? I believe Mr. Williams has all the information. Mrs. Ace was thinking that she might enter it. Mrs. Ace, uh, really? Yeah, she thinks she has some hidden talent. You can never <laughs> tell. We might all be running around asking Jane for her autographed picture one of these days. Mm-hmm. I'd like to have one of you, Mr. Lorenz. Of me? Yes. I started a book once, and I had all the pictures of my favorites pasted in it, and I'd certainly like to paste you. Oh, <laughs> what is so matter, Jane? <laughs> and so Jane Ace enters on the career of a movie star. Some rather startling and amusing developments take place, as we shall learn when next we meet the Easy Aces.